Hi everyone, Sheila Keeter here. I am the Teacher for Inclusion, which means I have a Teachers Pay Teacher shop called Teacher for Inclusion, as well as a blog called Teacher for Inclusion. Today I'm going to talk about two things, one a positive and one not so positive. The first one is um, I want to show you how some people are connecting a website to their Teachers Pay Teacher shop. And the second one is what to do when you get that toxic customer. So let's start with the positive. I'm going to share my screen here. And this, the two people that I'm going to show you are the keynote speakers for the Teachers Pay Teachers Conference. And that's how I was able to find um, something really cool that they did with their shop. Sorry if I say cool too much, but I am from California and it's part of our vocabulary. Anyhow, um, this is the One Stop Teacher Shop, and she has a banner here that says, want access to my entire vault of freebies. Pretty tempting, right? So in order to go there, you click on sign me up. And once you hit sign me up, it takes you to what may be um, a website or this may be something that you can do on MailChimp um, fairly easily. And if you want to subscribe, then you hit subscribe and you put in your email list and your name. And now you have access to this person's resources. I think this is a great way to build an email list, especially if you don't have a blog or if you don't like to write, don't start a blog. Um, because you have to write every week. I love to write. And blogs are really time consuming and they become not so much fun after the 35th one. Um, so this is a great way, I think, to add um, an email list to your repertoire, you might say. So let's go back to... The second website that I wanted to show you, this is Learning in Wonderland. And as you can see, she has Don't Miss a Freebie. Click here to sign up for Wonderland updates. So we're going to click there. Now, she has a lot going on on her web page. Um, she has Home, About, Blog, TPT Shop, Wonderland, Shop, YouTube, Amazon Finds, Newsletter, and Contact. Now, this is more than I would have going on. Um, on my web page, if I had one, which I don't, <laughs> I'm sticking with uh, YouTube for now and my blog for now, but um, this is pretty great. The only thing that I would be aware of if you were a newer seller and even myself having been on Teachers Pay Teachers for a year is that I would be careful about taking people away from your shop because I could get really distracted here. I could go to YouTube and if I do you click on YouTube, then that takes us to her videos and there's no way to go back to her shop from there. There's no link to connect her back. Now there is here, so you could go back to her TPT shop, but I would be very careful about taking people away from your store. Now this, this girl is like legit. She probably has an insane email list and probably makes more money getting people's emails than having them maybe purchase one thing. She probably gets, you know, um, a more long-term customer this way. But again, I would, I would just be very careful about taking people away from your shop. So if you are newer, maybe the first one would be a better option for you because they can sign up for your email letter and then hopefully go back to your shop to make a purchase. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about is the threatening toxic customer. So I wanted to share this example of something that happened to me yesterday morning because I don't want this to happen to you. It probably already has and you probably have already had this experience. It's really awful. Um, but if you haven't, then maybe I'll save you some uh, emotional turmoil um, 
from having making the same mistakes that I did. So I woke up in the morning yesterday, really early. And I had this, I had a sale, which was yay. And then all of a sudden I had this question and it was this customer and she had purchased one of my products called rebound. Um, it's, it's the book rebound by Jason, Ale- not Jason Alexander, Kwame Alexander. I was thinking Jason Reynolds, Kwame Alexander, and it's a novel study. So it's a long resource that is supposed to last at least three weeks, three to four weeks. Anyhow, she said to me that she was very threatening, very cold. She said, the, um, there are no teacher questions. The price is too high and the slides are out of order. If you don't fix this, I'm going to get a refund. Now, I should have just said, Thank you very much. Um, This is how you access the questions as stated in the teacher statement. If you need a teacher refund, please reach out to Teachers Pay Teachers. But instead, I thought to myself, it was an older resource that I had created and I couldn't remember how much work and time and energy went into this resource. So right away, I was apologetic. I said, I'm so sorry, I don't know. Um, I don't remember what's in the resource, but I'm going to look, look at it right now. I don't have a way to refund you, but if you want to look for something of equal or you know lesser value, then please find something um, that makes you happy. So I went and I looked at the resource and it was a PowerPoint resource and all of the questions were in the teacher notes section, which means you have to take it off of preview in order to see the teacher notes. Tons of questions for each slide, activities, questions. Um, I was really surprised because it was a newer resource. And then I realized, oh, this is the one I spent days on. And it was in the beginning where you're really extra careful and you go that extra mile. So I decided, um, okay, well, she doesn't know how to use PowerPoint. She doesn't fully know how to use PowerPoint. Maybe there will be other people who will be in the same boat and they'll have, it'll be confusing and they won't be able to find the questions. So I spent two hours moving everything from the teacher note section, which is really convenient for the teacher because while you have the slide up, you can print out and read the teacher notes and questions as you go, but that's okay. So I put them all on a separate pages And I wrote her back and I said, the questions were in the teacher notes section. This is how to access them. But I went ahead and I moved them to separate pages for you to make it easy for you. And I didn't mention anything about the price because when someone purchases something, they see the price. They know what the price is. If if they don't want to pay the price, they don't have to pay the price. That's That's a choice that they make. And as far as the slides being out out of order, they're in chronological order of the book. So I have no idea what she meant there, but I said the slides are in chronological order that follow the order of the book. So she still came back with asking for literally, she found the most expensive bundle in my store And she asked for the most expensive bundle. And she said, I really want to love your resources. Um, I'm sure that I will after I get this resource. And I just decided, you know what? That's fine. She complained about the price again. It's a $15 resource, which my price point is around $21 because my resources are for a month. I have to purchase a novel. I have to read the novel. I have to analyze the novel. I have to create the curriculum for a month. So the price point is higher. Um, So she complained about the price again. I just thought this, you know what? She can have it. I'm not going to lose sleep over this. And I wrote to her and I just said, I think it's better that you not purchase from my store because my price points are higher. You seem very unhappy with the price and I want my customers to be happy, which is true. We do. We all want happy customers because it is, we know like it is not worth the bad review. And I don't 
think the buyers understand that. Like we're not, oh, we, we pulled one over on that customer. It's not like that. We would much rather have happy customers who don't complain. And so I think she was very offended by me asking her not to make any more purchases in my store. So she went and she gave me a one star and she said that there were no questions, which she knew was a lie. She said that the slides were out of place, which I still don't know what she's talking about. And then she complained again about the price. Um, and so the lesson here would be when someone comes at you and they're threatening, don't fall for it. Don't go for it. Don't think about the review because they're going to probably get you in the end anyway after you jump through several hoops. I mean, this girl took up two hours of my morning, gave me a one. I went through extra hoops to help her out. Um, when the resource was exactly fine as it was. In fact, I'm thinking of raising the price on the resource because it's a good one. Um, anyhow, now I'm not saying don't listen to, I, I listen to all of my feedback and I take people's advice and I make changes, but there are times when someone is wrong she didn't know how to use the resource and she was wrong and the slides were not out of order. Um, and again, with the price point, people see that price, they need to make a decision if they want to purchase or not. So don't give in to the toxic, threatening customer. I'm probably going to give you a one anyway, or, you know, whatever. And um, just try to take your poor reviews in stride because everybody gets them. It does bring you down quite a bit when someone gives you a one, but you have quality resources and you're going to get that score back up. So thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of this and I will see you next time. Thanks.